Hello, my name is Rajesh Gatti, and I am a technical leader for the Cisco ACI solution technology. Today, I'm going to talk about layer two loop detection and mitigation in ACI. Let's compare the loop detection techniques on Nexus standalone deployments versus ACI deployments. On Nexus standalone based designs, spanning tree protocol is the most commonly used protocol to help create a loop free environment. In addition, VPC based designs also help create a non-blocking architecture using link aggregation. However, Cisco ACI is a routed fabric, hence there is no possibility of a loop at the fabric infrastructure level. In ACI, we do not have spanning tree running on the switches. However, ACI does rely on specific protocols to ensure loop-free designs. Loop mitigation is achieved in ACI by using LLDP and MCP protocols. Spanning tree protocol running on external switches connected to ACI will also help prevent layer two loops. Let's look at these individual protocols that ACI uses for loop-free deployment and understand what is needed to configure and deploy it. The LLDP protocol is enabled by default on the front panel ports. We typically don't see LLDP protocol being used to prevent loops. This is where ACI can extract useful information from the protocol and tailor it for loop prevention use case. At port linkup, the switch sends an LLDP frame with specific TLV fields that has details of the node. If an ACI leaf switch sees that the neighbor is also an ACI leaf switch, it disables the port. This normally leads to detecting miscabling within less than one second. Let's do some testing in our lab. Let's look at a TOR switch for testing LLDP based loop prevention. We have LLDP enabled by default on the port and the port is down currently. We will directly connect port 24 on leaf 101 to port 24 of leaf 102. This port goes up, but it is put out of service, so it cannot forward any data plane traffic. Do note that we have not configured any access policies on the port, nor is the port part of any EPG. A fault is registered showing the wiring mismatch. This can be useful during debugging, plus alerting the ops team about possible miscabling. LLDP-based detection detects miscabling and puts the port out of service. Spanning tree-based loop detection is not a configuration implemented in ACI. ACI is just layer 2 transit for the BPDU, and as long as the EPG VLAN configuration is consistent, the receiving switch will do the STP calculation and determine a loop-free path. Let's look at the lab setup again, where we have an external switch connected to leap 102 and 103. Port E117 is connected to the Nexus 3K, and port 127.4 is connected to Nexus 3K as well. On the Nexus 3K, we see the LLDP adjacency as well as we can see that the VLAN extended has one of the ports in blocking state. Now this VLAN 1122 is also configured on the ACI side. We look at the VLAN deployed on the specific ports. Here we see that 1122 is deployed on port ETH 117 and on leaf 103, it is deployed on port 127.4. From the topology, we can see how the spanning tree BPDU is transiting through the ACI fabric and causing a loop-free topology to be created downstream. In summary, as long as the fabric is configured to forward the BPDU correctly, the downstream device and STP running on it should take care of creating a loop-free topology. A number of implementations use VPC-based designs which create a non-blocking architecture with high bandwidth availability through link aggregation. This is something to consider when connecting to Nexus VPC devices. We will now look at MCP which also provides loop mitigation and is extremely useful especially if an external device malfunction or if there is some misconfiguration resulting in a loop. With MCP enabled, ACI disables the port where the loop is occurring while keeping one port up. It does this by sending a special type of frame every two seconds by default. Uh, if an ACI leaf receives this frame, then it knows that a loop has occurred and takes the action of error disabling the port. MCP needs to be explicitly enabled through a two-step process. Step one is the MCP interface policy, which is enabled by default and applied to all front panel interfaces. Step two is a global MCP policy, which is disabled by default. In the lab fabric, we have this policy explicitly enabled, but remember that it is disabled by default. MCP protocol is not active till you enable the policy globally. The configuration of MCP requires entering a key to uniquely identify the fabric. The MCP frames are sent every two seconds. 
and we have a loop detection multiplier of 3, so it takes approximately 7 seconds for MCP to detect the loop. By enabling the checkbox, ACI switch sends MCP PDUs tagged with the VLAN ID specified in the EPG. This helps with loop detection in each VLAN. Let's check in the lab how MCP can detect a loop. We have two interfaces on two different switches connected to the external network. ETH117 has MCP enabled, and it also has MCP enabled globally. Now we log on to the second switch, LEAF103, which connects to the same external network as LEAF102. ETH127.4 provides the second connectivity to this external network. MCP is enabled on this interface, as well as it is enabled globally. Now let's log into the Nexus 3K, which is the external network for our topology. We have VLAN 1122, which has two ports as part of the spanning tree topology. We are going to introduce a loop by creating a BPDU filter on one of the interfaces. The BPDU filter blocks the BPDU, which causes an STP reconvergence. It also is a very quick way of introducing a loop. Please do not try this configuration in a production setup. We will see that the spanning tree topology is converging on the Nexus 3K. The ports are moving from learning to forwarding state. At some point of time, we will have a full loop introduced in this topology. MCP protocol will now act and cause one of the ports to be error disabled. If you log on to LEAP 103, we see that the port ETH 1274 will now be down and the reason why it is down is due to MCP loop error disabled. MCP is preventing a loop and also it is keeping one of the interface up so that we have a single threaded environment. We can check MCP at the interface level to see which VLANs are active on that port. If we check the corresponding interface on LEAF 103, we see the active VLANs as well as we see where the loop was detected. This is useful in understanding which VLAN is causing the loop. For the hardcore network engineers interested in knowing how a MCP packet looks like, here is a quick view. MCP packet can be captured on the leaf and as you can see, we generate it every two seconds. A fault is registered indicating a MCP loop. This can be useful during debugging issues plus alerting the ops team to investigate further. In short, MCP detects an external loop and error disables one of the path. It makes the downstream network single-threaded, but prevents a complete meltdown due to a loop. Fault registration makes it easy for tracking the event on a large-scale fabric. LLDP and MCP can complement each other and help mitigate layer 2 loops. We do recommend you to check the scalability guide for MCP configuration limits. The design guide link in the video description will provide more details on these protocols. Thank you for watching this video.